Luca Baldini. I work for uh, the United Nations Relief and Work Agency in Amman, Jordan. And uh, my friends and colleague, Francesco Iacoboni, is from Capgemini. will introduce himself later. The, the presentation shows the, how we use the definition of a semantic uh, model in uh, integration problems to okay. avoid uh, to create the usual set of software and looking at data instead of uh, uh, information only. We manage uh, services and support for some five million refugees in the, middle, in the Middle East spread in five countries, uh, Lebanon, Jordan, West Bank, Syria, and, and the Gaza Strip. Uh, the specificity of, of this, of this uh, intervention is that we provide services for education. We run 170 schools, we have clinics, we provide medical services, social assistance, and many other services. Our Gaza team has recently developed a, a new system to support the automation of several processes in the school across the region and to, to get information and manage curricula and data for half a million students every year. To manage this enrollment, uh, the information sits at the level of needed a certain number of integration to get the data about the teacher from our HR system in, uh, in SAP, to get information about the refugees and the family data to verify if they were entitled to get the service, uh, and other kind of information related to school health from education, from the school system. Uh, traditionally, before my arrival, the idea was always to physically replicate through transaction log distribution data coming from the main source of the system, still keeping a side of the organization. Uh, with uh, Francesco and the other, instead, we decided to provide a common set of APIs to all the developer, not only to fulfill the, pro the need of this specific application, but also to create the basement for future reuse of this concept, so no one of my designer had to think how can identify a student, that is a person with certain attributes and the like. The, the, the change that for me was new, but I miss uh, Francesco to explain you the detail, he will tell you later, is the movement from a data model from a knowledge representation model. I knew the ontology model since the late 90s, which was the fashion of the day for knowledge representation, and it was the first time that someone was proposing me to use as a preliminary step to write to a data model in a service-oriented architecture. I have to admit now that we did it, that it was very productive because this created a common language between us and our business representatives. So we were not focusing on the usual, as, as, a, as a technical uh, database designer, attributes put in table, normalized, and the like, and enabled the utilization of different kinds of technology for data retrieval and distribution. So the model was created by using uh, OWL, that I imagine is a standard that you know, but I don't remember the tool, but Francesco hope we come and tell. And we defined the common data model for the agency. So as of today, my designer, when they have a new set of requirements about a business topic, don't go to the data structure in, in our design documents. They refer to the common data model looking for the meaning they are looking for. After this design phase, uh, the, we, we moved into the decision on which kind of tool uh, to adopt for the implementation of, uh, of the integration layer. Uh, from the previous project, we already have uh, utilized the enterprise service bus from WSO2. And in this specific situation, which we wanted not only to manage message passing integration, but uh, create a set of API for each of the knowledge domain, uh, the, the recommendation we got from Capgemini was to adopt the API manager for, uh, from uh, WSO2 to complete uh, the architecture and the governance uh, components, so to ensure that we have a proper catalog, being able to identify the, the, the people that are authorized to use this API and so forth. Uh, it is technically possible so for us, uh, using this approach, to reuse a part of the code that we developed in uh, .NET technology, while the new one is used, is defined by using the WSO2 component only. 
and uh, the, the MZC concept from, uh, from the architecture of the education management information system. I enter into details that are in your part of the This is also an enabler of different approach to our business model. Instead of looking of each individual service, again, as an organizational silo, we want to reshape our way of working with our beneficiaries, looking at them as individuals that are served by us rather than uh, a, a student, a, a patient, and the like, creating, we call it a refugee centric, the one that come, of you that come from the commercial sector can recognize the mimic from customer centric model, more or less is the same concept, putting our beneficiary at the heart of our operations and reshaping the information system to support this, uh, this vision. I will leave to you at this point. No. But the presentation is welcome. The presentation? Otherwise, I will, uh, I will describe. Okay, so the main focus was to really change uh, the, um, the idea to, to, um, for, for the key landscape in Urla, to be the technology and a labor for, uh, for the business. That means that technology, in our opinion, is there. It's not a matter of technology, but uh, of people. So, before there are some strategic principles that Lucas uh, already underlined, then uh, there are some strategic driver related to an idea of platform. In our case, uh, okay, moving uh, from uh, uh, an Urba-centric view, this is normal in any organization that they look inside their self. So the, the organization problem and not to the refugee needs. So moving to this new paradigm, and the technology is an enabler. Mm? Okay. So this is the, our strategic principle. We want a platform that is information centric, that is a shared platform, that is for the people. And of course, in this semantic database, we have a lot of uh, relevant data. It has to be really secure and guarantee the privacy of the data that we have inside. So, also here, nothing to do with, uh, with, uh, with technology at the moment. I think that the real value of WSO2 is that if you have an idea, there is no limit on what you can really apply. Seems really with no sense to use OWL in a WSO2 data service. But it's really an enabled WSO2, and you can do what, what you want at the end. With, uh, the limit is really the, the fantasy at this point. Now going to a more technical detail. We have some main entities of, uh, of the agency that are the refugee data, the financial data, the staff HR data, all the logistic elements, the health, and the school that are the services that Urwa give to his customer, that is, uh, the, the refugee. We have, for every entity, design on OWL. This w OWL is uh, in action. What means that it's possible to navigate with API the data of the entities using the OWL. That means if you have done correctly the map of the knowledge, so if you we are sit with all the departments, to struggle together to say what is a refugee. Because for HR, a refugee has a meanings, for IT has another meanings, for uh, financial has another meanings. So we have sit together, we have spent a lot of time to define together what a refugee is. At this point, you have, there is no need in the future, if this work is well done, to produce new API because Navigating the OWL, you have every API you need. So at uh, front-end level, at API level, you can invoke with a query mechanism whatever part of the entity you need. So at the end, every entity has multiple API that could be, that are queryable, and you can navigate the knowledge, the OWL. 
This is uh, real for all this entity. Today, this architecture is used from the educational management system that support the educational flow for all, uh, for all the refugee. And they are working in a very difficult country like Syria, Lebanon, and uh, West Bank, Gaza. Okay. And I want to spend uh, a word on the great work that the developers in Gaza do to integrate their uh, front end, their educational management system through API to what we call the common data model. And they immediately understand the value of WSO2 and how it was easy to get the data they need navigating the, the OWL. Going to the application view. But I repeat, the value of WSU2 that I see is that really, if you have an idea, an architectural approach with solid principle, you can reach this principle. So here you have, uh, uh, you can see uh, on top the API manager. Uh, you know what the API manager is, so I don't spend any word on this. On the governance registry, what we have inside are the OWL schema. Then you have the enterprise service bus that is coming from the previous project, so we have reused it. And then, always inside WSO2, we have deployed two other open source uh, solutions. One is Talent for, the batch inter for some batch interfaces and uh, Bonita for the BPM. I know that WSO2 has a wonderful BPM product, but uh, at such time, uh, it was not so solid. Now it is. <laughs> and uh, so we chose to use, uh, to use uh, Bonita. In this case, Bonita is used to propagate some data and to define some approval process to propagate the data between owner of the data and uh, a slave uh, system. These are the benefits, uh, of course, mainly related to the transparency of the agency and the possibility to give to beneficiaries and donors a clear and transparent view of all the data present in, uh, in the agency. And furthermore, we want to unlock the power of APIs using at the moment only for the educational management system, but in the future for every application that will need uh, 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 holistic data. So. Well, one thing that has happened at the end of this project is that my colleague understood that they can now deploy more digitized process across the agency. Because of the fact of the SAD organization, no one before was thinking they can use data coming from the financial system, the health system, and the procurement as an example to control the hospitalization expense. This is a process that does not exist in any of our information system. So when this matter of unlock is not something theoretically to, to, to achieve, it's something that is already visible in the brain of my colleagues. So, and, uh, so we are not talking uh, in this presentation of a use case where we use WSU2. WSU2 is the enterprise platform to help URWA to reach its goal, that is to put the refugee at the center. I want to repeat this message. The technology is an enabler, and WSO2 is a wonderful enabler, but at the basis, you should have a vision on what you want to do of your organization. What is next? The idea is now to leverage on WSO2 capabilities. You know that uh, I see, sometimes I say WSO2 is wonderful because you have uh, a basis then you have a lot of plugins that you can put in your enterprise architecture. The next plugin for us could be, in, uh, in the future, to use OWL that we have mapped uh, on the common data model with uh, non-structured data coming from the fields to, do, to perform contextual action. Okay. And we have all the components there. So, we have built uh, all uh, with uh, OWL on which we can do inference to raise the knowledge of a particular context and uh, applying uh, WSO2 complex event processing or the machine learning 
we can do on this OWL some contextual action to help refugee in particular case. For example, yesterday we begin to talk about emergency situation that we hope will never happen again. But in this case, putting together the data we have in the common data model, plus unstructured data coming from the field, we can really help in the emergency situation taking good decision to help, to help a refugee. That's all. Um, I don't know if Luca wants to add something. Uh, just to, uh, because I was not the, the, the most supportive of these new ideas when I, when I, when I joined. I'm a fan of service-oriented architecture, but I was, honestly, as I said before, quite confused about this idea of modeling knowledge rather than data. I have to admit that this approach opened the door and the brain of my non-IT specialists because in the conversation they had with us, they could use their own language. And when they saw the, the final outcome, they now understand that their knowledge is representable in the system and can action support that until now they were not even able to, to manage. So from being the one pushing for innovation, now when the one is struggling to be able to implement all the new ideas that are coming to our DASA with, uh, after the deployment of this model, including not so visible matters like how we manage uh, uh, access, how we can protect confidentiality of some data. They were all there, but this initiative created a common language that IT specialists and business representatives are now able to manage and to use for the internal conversation. I really look forward to, to, to further deploy the, the solution that doesn't seem to have the need for further infrastructure development in areas in which today we don't have really software components uh, and analytics is one of them and real-time analytics for fraud detection and emergency response is really key when you have a thousand of events happening in the same exact moment. Until now we couldn't even imagine how to, to handle. Uh, I believe that with this, uh, this solution the remaining WSO2 product we are considering to implement this will be possible to implement without disrupting the, the architecture again. You want to add anything else? No. For me, Thank you so. for your time. We got some minus X, I believe, because they restarted the counter mm -hmm. when you started to talk. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.